Welcome back, everybody, to Shoulder Tap. The men from the Risk team. We've got Brett in the house. Brett, we are seeing some selling action in the equities right now as we speak. Real quick, trading 18, 830s in the NASDAQ. Push the downside about 20 points off the lows there. Uh, yep, NASDAQ as well. Dow's making new lows as we speak, too. So we got some uh, markets moving here. Uh, a lot of volatility today. Good action, good price action today on this Thursday. Brett, from what you're seeing, we see more red or we see more green on the board here at Top Step. Uh, we're probably seeing a little bit more red today, I would say, and looking at the yeah. board. Thanks so much for having me, Andre. And hopefully yeah. some of the things that we talk about here in this segment, uh, we can help every trader watching get into the green in the future. And that's what we're here for. Manage that risk and mitigate the risk and seek profitability in our trades. So Absolutely. let's uh, get after it. I, I, yeah, let's, I know you saw Get after it. Talk to us. Talk to us. Who's our, who got any big trades going on back there? Uh, I heard some whispers oh. that we might be seeing some size here, uh, some of our traders. What do we got? Dakota, just being Dakota, I, I love seeing that he's flat now, had a big position on, and it really went in his favor. It's a relief Oof. to uh, see it end profitably because big positions mean bigger risk. And Dakota, great job managing it. Great job getting out of the trade, something that can be exceedingly difficult, whether against you or profitable. But uh, man, what a day out of Dakota posting well into five figures. Uh, I think it's the total sum is around $33,000 of profitability today. I remember back when I was younger, in college and and shortly thereafter uh i made that in a year <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that wasn't bad money either that was not bad yeah. money back then absolutely oh, so goodness. man dakota killing it and yeah, love to see it you you've really gained some traction in the account and so excited to see that now, now we just need to see some payouts from the account and pay yourself. Agree, agree, Dakota. That's what it's all about. Take some, yeah, take a payout, make that money real in your pocket. I believe I heard whispers that the account balance might be over two hundred large, which is insane. Just great, great work. Crude new lows. Hoop says yes, indeed. Hoop. Um, anyways, with that being said, let's get right into it. What who do we got here for our trading cards? We got some shoulder taps. We got some shout outs. What are we working with today, Brett? Yeah, I mean, a couple of shout outs just to get started. Mark T in uh, a Top Step X live account. I looked at him earlier and was right around $4,000 in profit or actually uh, $5,800 in my notes. Now he's at $6,985 in profits in his live Top Step X account. So excited to see that. He uh, was flat last I checked and love seeing that. Just like Dakota. Locking in profits, you don't go broke taking profits. Great job. Um, awesome, awesome. We've got Felipe uh, up 3,300. We've got uh, Jake up 3,400. So these are some of the profitable traders that I wanted to highlight. I know the house account was a little choppy today and uh, took, took a dinger on that one, but uh, still profitable on the week. So excited to see it. A lot of good things happening. We'll take it. Yes, we will. We'll take it. Sometimes levels don't hit. Sometimes, you know, got to work on our technique. Fair enough. All part of trading. But good to see that there is volatility back in the markets. After that, in those NVIDIA earnings kind of got the party started. And here we are. We're going to see if we're going to test the new test some lows here in the S&P's low of the day. 53.16. Currently trading, excuse me, currently trading 53.20. Still pressure to the downside here. Uh, about 30 points off the lows in the NASDAQ. Again, lows in the NASDAQ, 18,802. So that 800 level is significant doubt right on the lows right now so we'll keep an eye on that brett but let's get into these cards what do we have thanks so much the first trader that uh i wanted to shoulder tap was justin uh okay. justin is trading the nasdaq and uh let me bring that up and justin's trading the nasdaq average daily p l of 1231 77% winning days. And one thing that I really like, we've got a two to one reward over risk ratio and a 60%, I'm sorry, 71% winning trade percentage. And with that two to one risk ratio, that paired with the winning trade percentage, you're killing it. 
you're making money in the account and and love to see it. Um, a few of the things that I wanted to highlight for Justin was the uh, average winning and losing trade day. They are identical wow. at 2286 <laughs> profit and 2286 in in losses on the day. Um sure is. but one thing that Justin is really doing well is managing that intraday P&L. Uh intraday the total profitability is 1771 and he's stopping for the day on average with a net P&L like you see on that card of 1231. So just $500 of pullback or less than a third of of the profits on the day. So not an easy thing to do. Not at all. Um, Have we ever seen something like this where we got exact one to one risk I mean, our uh, average winning day, average losing day, two twenty. I've never seen that before. That's wild. I don't think I have, and it is not favorable rounding. I, if it is fifty cents, it goes to the nearest dollar above. It it yep. is that way on the trade reports, okay. and I kind of got a chuckle and had to double check it myself. Yeah, but hey, if you got if you're if, if you're seventy seven percent winning days, the math is on your side, so that's going to work. Absolutely. And I mean, one thing Justin is really doing well is is limiting the trades that that they take, um, staying in profitable trades for over three hours. Uh, losers are are a little lengthy, but the the results tell a, a great story, in that you're doing a great job managing it, even though you're staying in some of those losers for two hours. Um, some areas to improve. If uh, you've got Justin's trade report up, Andre, you might notice yep. that the losing days, which I realize there aren't a ton of at 77% winning days, but the losing days have significantly more contracts traded and trades uh -huh. made and would love to see that get, get minimized as that is very telling. Yes, it is. It's um, a classic case of, would you say, it's, we, I mean, obviously we're not watching him get in and out of every trade, but when I fall you know, victim to that, it's simply because I'm over trading. I'm trying to chase my losses. I get way more aggressive in my entries. I'm not getting as decisive on my entry. I'm just kind of freestyle, freewheeling and just pretty, pretty much click bang and everything, hoping I can catch something. But uh, typically this looks like over trading to me on losing days. Yeah, over trading, angry trading, emotional trading, whatever yep. you want to call it. They're all kind of similar in that when your back's against the wall, it's tough to make money. Even if your first trade on the day, which I found my trades, the first trade on the day would be profitable. And then it'd be like, all right, we're, we're off to the races. And then I just teach myself a quick lesson and they're not fun lessons to be had. Mm -hmm. but, yep. Yep. Uh, We've been there. So, wait, yeah. okay. What do you, I got a question. What do you mean by avoid treating accounts as replaceable? What led you to, so, you know, that in terms of what does that mean? Justin has had a lot of accounts. Um, he's uh, been trading with Top Step since March of 2023. And there are just a lot of, of trading combines, express funded accounts that have not panned out and treat every account like you won't get another one. And that's how we learn and grow as traders. And, and that's the goal here is to ultimately reach profitability so that yes. we can do this in our own account or in, in the Top Step Live account and really make a comfortable living. Yep, absolutely. So you what we're saying here, we're not trying to encourage you to take resets and keep opening up new accounts. We want you to succeed and to exactly do that. Do not treat accounts as replaceable. We want to see success. Take this, take it seriously. You know, sometimes you get close to that, you get close to the loss limit, and you say, "Screw it!" You yolo the trade. You say, "Ah, oh, I, I can just reset." Get another. We don't want to see that. That doesn't lead to good trading behavior. Yeah, stick to your guns. What, it, it's never good to be saying, "Ah, oh, what's another couple hundred dollars in losses?" It's already a, exactly. a bunch of money. That's not. That's a drop in the bucket. It's not. Uh -huh. it, sometimes that can all that it takes to turn it around yep i agree i agree um, all right well uh 
Let's keep moving on here. But Brett, really quick in the chat, they said you sound like Owen Wilson. Have you heard that before? I have not heard that uh, I sound like Owen Wilson, but uh, I, look like I, I, ha- I think the blonde hair may contribute to uh, people <laughs> yeah. saying that. It's other, or Brett's, oh, Brett looks like Luke Wilson. I, he says you look like Luke Wilson. I, uh, my bad, my bad. It sounds like Luke Wilson. He's not heard that before, oh. but uh, now he has. Now he has. Very good. All right, moving on. Next card. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I appreciate you saying that. Next up, we have Michael A. And Michael A is kind of spinning his wheels. Oh, is spinning his wheels a little bit. And let me bring up his card real quick. I'm doing the same here. Uh, We did bounce off those lows here. Go ahead, take your time. I'll do a quick uh, market recap here. Bounced off, uh, see a bit of a bounce here. Big dead cap bounce, TBD. We are seeing a bit of buyers came in around 32 level here in the, in the NASDAQ, about 30, 30 points higher off of that. Same here in the S&P. So we are seeing a bit of a bounce here. See if we make another push lower. Crude keeps making new lows while we're talking. Go ahead, Brett. Uh, thanks so much, Andre. Appreciate that. It can be difficult to keep these uh, traders straight in my mind. I was I started talking about uh, some of the stuff I had remembered from the following trader. We're going to be talking about Cameron. All right. But back to Michael. Um, Michael is in a 150k XFA that we chose to call up to live uh, recently, and really doing well. A great risk over reward, and. Three to one on the winners, $900, $911 average winner, 311 average loser. So that is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, 18 trade days completed in the XFA and just getting some getting some traction. The best day is, is uh, about $100 more than their worst day. And... 89% winning days is one thing to really highlight here, which when you do have your best day and worst day similar at similar levels, you know what? That's fantastic if, if you're well above 60% particularly. Um, one thing that Michael does a great job with is Michael has never hit his DLL or daily yes. loss limit in this account. So exciting to see that and really want to encourage them to continue that attitude and discipline going into the Absolutely. live accounts, which may, which will start very soon for them. I know the funding team is getting that set up for Michael and uh, they'll be trading it soon. Excellent stuff. Um, uh, go ahead, Brett. I got a couple questions for you after this. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Another thing that I wanted to highlight with Michael is he had two days with zero winning trades. And Hmm. that is a tough thing to do. Like we were talking about before with Justin. Um, Sometimes you feel like your back's against a wall. And when you can't put a winning trade on for the day, it can really feel like that. And I, in my notes, I have, this is one of the most difficult things for a lot of traders to do, even highly experienced traders, is to say, you know what, today's not my day. Let's, let's mm. put the cleats on the wall and, and <laughs> just watch. Um, it, it's, a, it's the way to establish yourself as a trader, and, and getting established takes time and discipline. It does. Yes, it does. So, um, uh, essentially, Michael is stopping themselves at 50% of daily loss limit. Is that, I, I assume that's what you're seeing in the trade reports. Have we actually, have we, have we talked to him to confirm that? Or is just best, basically what the, the trends are looking like or the data is showing? Based on the history, that is what the data is showing. As okay. well as they keep their positions kind of similar or along the same lines to that uh, daily loss limit. They keep their positions much smaller than they do the scale than the scaling plan would allow. They're able to trade 15 contracts and their average position or their average trade is less than three contracts per trade and three like trades that. per day. That is selectivity. Like that. And when you're making money, it's tough not to click away for a lot of yep. people. Um I got a question, Brett. When we when we see traders, they got the ability to trade up to 15 
max position. Is it more often than not that you will, we will eventually see these traders, they will go max position at some point? It's just inevitable. Do we see this? Is this the typical, is this, the, is this typical what we're, this behavior of this model right here? No, a lot of traders, I gotcha. from my experience, they try to kill it on, on day one or two or three, yeah. especially if, if the first couple days are profitable because Hey, if you can do it with one, why can't you do it with a hundred, for example? <laughs> and <Been there. laughs> it's a dangerous game that sometimes works, which can also not be a good thing because it works a very small percentage of the time. And that kind of reassures a lot of people that, oh, hey, it worked this time or, or an air trade is, pro is profitable. I've had that where oh I ac I accidentally clicked and and now I'm in this position it's it's against me but let's wait and see. Uh huh. Eighty percent of the times they get worse in in my experience. Yes, they do. Accidentally clicked. We've all been there. Uh oh, we're in. Uh, let's see what happens. As opposed to just going flat. Hey, as we're talking, we got new lows here in the uh, S and P's trade fifty three sixteen. New lows. S and P's Dow about three points off of the lows there trading. 351, low of the day, 348. Uh, NASDAQ a little bit strong. We're still getting seeing, seeing some pressure to the downside. About 20 points off the lows in the NASDAQ. So barely, barely being stronger. But the sellers have taken over, and we are turning over. We'll see if we can test that 5,300 level in the S&Ps. The volatility is here today. Brett, I'm sure you guys are very busy in the risk department, risk team, watching all this moving going on. Uh, how cognizant of the... I had a question for you. How cognizant of the markets and like what the equities are doing are you guys in relation to what our traders are doing? Or do you guys see a correlation between you know higher volatility, you know, higher red, higher profits? Is there a correlation? Even not that we have, just qualitatively speaking. I mean, as far as volatility goes, day traders in general love to see the volatility. Um, it's it's how we we make money as traders. Yep. And it can be tough and it can really test a trader's um, discipline as yeah. far as not clicking. Um, that can be one of the toughest things to do in volatility because it's a zero sum game. There's people making money, there's people losing money, but ultimately at the end of the day, it's a zero sum game for everybody. And the volatility, if you get caught, you get caught and and sometimes you can't dig out of it and with the volatility those fluctuations can catch you off guard and and you can hit a daily loss limit or you can hit a personal loss limit and the important thing is to keep your discipline yep agree agree well this is certainly a volatile day so uh, all right let's get back to our third card today then maybe if we have time we got one question about the auto lick with the house account trade but let's uh let's talk let's get on our third card all right, Cameron, uh, we can move through this somewhat quickly, but uh, Cameron, the one thing I want to highlight with them is they are in a uh, live account, actually. I think uh, the XFA to live might be, uh, yeah, it's a 150K live funded account um, in the live markets. They've been in the account for 93 days which is fantastic, not a, an easy thing to do. But uh, their average daily P&L, that is not a typo, that shouldn't be a comma, is negative $1.80. <laughs> um, not, not bad, not good. It's a new one. Um, yeah. I mean, really, if I had to pick one side of good or bad, I would probably say that's good because you know what? You still got the account. You can trade 100%. tomorrow. And that's something exciting to see. With 93 days in the account, the best day being 4,000, the worst day being negative 3,000, I would hope to see a, a slightly higher average daily P&L in general. Um, you can a few things that you can do is consider trading one lots till you get a little traction and get that average daily p l up um the other thing that i noted on cameron is mm -hmm. products traded there is a laundry list of products traded here and what are we looking consider, at here? oh yeah consider choosing one or two of the products <laughs> to uh to specialize on 
I was a NYMEX guy. I traded primarily crude oil, nat gas, RBOB, and uh, heating oil. But uh, that was what I primarily focused on. I would occasionally dabble in other markets, the grains, but uh, NYMEX had pretty much my undivided attention. Yeah, this is, uh, well, they're spraying all fields here with all these, boy, they're, they got, they're dipping their toe in a little bit of everything. They haven't missed a market, really, that we don't offer. This is uh, very impressive. They're still in the game. You said 93 days in this live funded account. And what it sounds like, that's longer than the average, which is good. So they're, I mean, they're hanging in there. They're hanging in there. Maybe, yeah, like you said, uh, maybe consider <laughs> consider choosing one or two products to specialize in. I like that. Trade one contract per trade until consistently profitable. Very good feedback there. Uh, I mean, Brett, how do we get, we got a live funded trader. Do we, does the risk team ever come in and say, all right, let's just, we're going to stick to three, you know, two or three markets or two or three products or as a live funder, they do have they are they do have the ability to pretty much trade ten different products if they want to. Yeah, I mean that's really up to the trader what markets yeah. they're going to trade. Um, you obviously have to sign up for the market data with sure. the different exchanges. But as as far as what markets or products any top step traders trade. They, the list is on our website. You can trade any of them as a trader in the trading combine, express funded account, or the live accounts. And you just you just need to have it set up on your account once you get to the live markets. But uh, Cameron is doing a great job. He is, it, recently it looks like Cameron has kind of settled down based on the trade report. And there's a lot of days that are just over 200 or just on, on yeah. the good side of zero. And, and there's not a lot of big losing days and particularly no daily loss limit hits, which is, is really, it looks like we're getting, we're getting settled down. We're, we're finding our groove and, and Cameron is doing a good job managing this account as of the most recent trading. Wow, yeah, really am. Boy, this is a, a fascinating card. Trades every damn product. <laughs> this is a good one. I, yeah, you brought a, trades every damn product, average daily PL, buck $1.80 negative. Um, this might be a first, Brett. I can't recall seeing. And on top of that, we also had a trader. Average daily win is the exact same as their average daily loss. So these are two firsts for me. I don't know about you guys. You guys look at thousands and thousands of reports. I don't recall ever seeing something like this before. Yeah, a couple one-offs that uh, I don't see often if if I've ever crazy. seen them outside of these instances. Some of these particular points that uh, we bring up on Shoulder Tap I don't like always stand out when we're reviewing other aspects of the trading or the account, but uh, it's, no. it's a good platform to start from in the live account after 93 active trading days. Well, Brett, I got to say... I'm sure you look at thousands and thousands of cards, and at some point, they kind of all blend together at some point, but these two definitely are going to stick out for a long time coming. Uh, that's all we got time for on Shoulder Tab. We got group coaching coming up next here with Jack and Robert. That should be very, very interesting to see. Brett, thank you so much for your time. Uh, yeah, can't say we've seen two cards like this before, but again, thank you so much. We got group coaching coming up next. Uh, s and is still making new lows. Dow making new lows. And NASDAQ might be pushing lower. We got group coaching coming up next. Markets are moving today, people. Let's trade.